This is a story that I've never told I gotta get this off my chest to let it go I need to take back the light inside you stole You're a criminal And you steal like you're a pro All the pain and the truth I wear like a battle wound So ashamed, so confused I was broken and bruised Now I'm a warrior Now I've got thicker skin I'm a warrior I'm stronger than I've ever been And my honor Is made of steel You can't get in I'm a warrior And you can never hurt Out of the ashes, I'm burning like a fire You can save your apologies, you're nothing but a liar I've got shame, I've got scars that I will never show I'm a survivor, in more ways than you know Cause all the pain and the truth I wear like a battle wound So ashamed, so confused I'm not broken or bruised Cause now I'm a warrior Now I got thicker skin I'm a warrior I'm stronger than I've ever been And my honor Is made of steel You can't get can never hurt me There's a part of me I can't get back A little girl grew up too fast All it took was once I'll never be the same Now I'm taking back my life today Nothing left that you can say Cause you were never gonna take the blame anyway Now I'm a warrior Thick as skin, I'm a warrior. I'm stronger than I've ever been. And my armor is made of steel. You can't get in. I'm a warrior, and you can never hurt me again. that know me, you know me because of my passion for Mary Kay, but I have another story besides my Mary Kay. The following story is personal because it's about me. More recently, thank you. It touched me that one of my consultants fell victim to domestic violence, and you may have heard of her. She's a 26-year-old that lived in Oceano, Patty Marino. She lost her life August 15th, 2015. That day, or within hours of finding this information out, is when I implemented this event. All those donations, everyone sitting here, every flyer you saw, everything was put together since that date. Because I've had it up here, but once that happened, I knew we had to have a voice. We had to start doing something about this. It's not okay anymore. It's never been okay, but it's really not okay. It's, it was just, it's, it's so sad. A 26 year old with a three and a five year old left. I can't even imagine. So many of you have daughters that age. I just, I don't even want you to have to imagine 
Have you ever experienced somebody or personally known somebody that had, had teenage pregnancy, per, uh, physically abused, dropping out of high school, maybe somebody that got into drugs, held by gunpoint, kid, uh, her daughter kidnapped by her own dad at six months old? Did you ever feel like you never wanted to watch Oprah because it felt like you were it was prying into your own life? Well, that's just a part of my life and what I've had to experience and overcome. So you see, you can never know one's personal story just by looking at their appearance. But there is hope right here. There is and can be joy, and most importantly, a new beginning. Now, let's begin the fashion show. I'm like, I'm all ready to give it up. I'm. I have stepped out. It's taken me years to find the power and the, and the faith and the, and the energy to get into this space, to want to say it out loud. Because I was always so worried about what people would say about me, what they would think about me, how they might treat me. And so today, we want to celebrate women. I never thought I would be one in four. You know, that statistic of women who are victims of domestic violence was something I heard about and never understood. My story is about freedom, it's about purpose, it's about empowering women. Since I was five years old, I've been sewing. It's my passion, it's something I just did as a hobby. But in 2000, I went to Los Angeles and I really saw this city full of creativity and I thought, you know what, this is my next step. During this time, I met this guy, you know, just Mr. Prince Charming. I started to become really dependent, and he started to take advantage. Well, why don't you just let me take care of you? He would max out my credit cards, and then he would pay them off every month. And he's like, oh, I'm building your credit. Now all my money's been spent. He spent every dime out of my savings. He's now maxed out these credit cards. I was trapped. The verbal assault started getting more and more intense, but he would do it in such a way that somehow it made sense in my head that I was the problem. He beat me within an inch of my life. He had me held up against the wall, choking me by the throat, and um, he pulled out a gun and held it to my head. I remember starting to grow into a really deep depression. There were days I didn't want to get out of bed, I couldn't leave the house, and I just thought, you know what, I should just end this. I'm just gonna go run and jump off the bridge. It was New Year's Eve. As I was opening my door, he grabbed my wrist and was dragging me, and he sucker punched me, and I'm laying on the ground um, with my dress over my head, and there was a man letting a celebrity actress into her limousine. The limousine driver came over and pulled my dress down and picked me up and slipped me his card and he said, I will be your witness. The policeman that showed up, um, Detective Hill, I will forever be grateful for. He said, you know what, you're my sister and no one treats my sister this way. Without, without those champions, you know, who has a chance? Basically, Detective Hill t kept his word and he went after him. He talked me into being strong enough to be a witness and to stand up for myself and to press charges. You know, day by day, my confidence came back, my strength came back. And I thought, I'm not being beaten and abused anymore, and I could take all this sadness and hurt inside of me, and I could turn it into a lot of change and love. It's not even about any one person. It's not about me, Abby Farron. It's about realizing that there's hope and inspiration. If you're in a household, know what's going in and what's coming out. Be a partner in that. And if you are not allowed to be a partner, there's something wrong. Love doesn't hurt like that. I know it seems hopeless, but there are so many resources out there. I'm not a survivor, I'm a victor. What I did was done with a lot of strength and a lot of courage. Every woman who comes out of that deserves to have that title of a victor, a champion. She really had to overcome some serious odds to get there. I am one in four.
Hi, my name is Steve Remmel. I'm the owner of Remmel Solutions. We offer affordable legal services and identity theft protection and cybersecurity through Legal Shield, and then also affordable health care, both for businesses and for individuals and families. And I'm really proud to be the lone male member of the Fashions for a Purpose Committee. Uh, I'd like to have a couple more guys join us, but for right now, it's the ladies and me. And you say, well, what's Steve doing on this thing for a fashion show? Well, you know, it's actually an issue that cuts across every area of our society. Uh, abusive relationships and domestic violence can happen in any relationship, any combination of people, not just a man uh, being abusive to a woman. And I was in a relationship that at moments was abusive. And I didn't necessarily recognize it at the time as domestic violence. Now, knowing what I know and being out of it, I look back and yeah. There were moments when it was it was tough and it definitely, definitely uh, was violent. And so that's a great example of why we're doing what we're doing. We want to bring awareness both to people that may be in an abusive relationship and help them to see that they have options and that they have support to make a change. Uh, and then also bring awareness more broadly. Uh, we never know who knows who when it comes to uh, this issue. And so we don't want to make any assumptions. We just want to get the message out and let people know that support exists. And then of course, all support and all action requires money to be effective. And that's why we're holding this fundraiser. So we're doing it in conjunction with the Mary Kay Foundation, very reputable organization. And Kimberly Victor, our leader is doing a great job. She's been doing this now for I think seven years. I've only been involved for a couple, but uh, we all really look up, look to her for leadership and we're very impressed with her commitment, her energy. We're equally committed in supporting her. So we ask for you to uh, to show your support, regardless of who you are and whether this is an issue that touches your life or not. Uh, just know that you're doing something really good by supporting this event to lend your support to this cause that really is important for us as a society to address because we all deserve to be in relationships that are positive and nurturing regardless of who we are. And I'm sure we would all agree with that. So I'm Steve Remmel, and that's why I'm on this committee. So I slept with a, a hammer or a screwdriver or a baseball bat. Um, there was multiple occasions where he tried stabbing her. If it was not for her neighbor who happened to be up at six in the morning to call us, she probably would have passed away. I mean, there was times in my home where there were hammers being thrown across the room at my head. try to you know start the house on fire and he locked her and the children up in a closet broke my nose um, just totally bruised my entire rib cage we lived a couple of blocks from the from the hospital and I found myself walking to the hospital a woman had uh, literally climbed off of her balcony bleeding profusely and collapsed on her neighbor's balcony after being beaten up by her her boyfriend of 14 years her oldest child which is a boy um, was very afraid and fearful to leave her alone um, he kind of took on the responsibility of the protector sleeping on my floor so that I could hear any vibration in my home because I was under so much intimidation and so much fear. We don't oftentimes like to think about the fact that violence is happening in our community, in the homes of our neighbors near us, but it really is true here in our county. In fact, in our county we have one of the highest rates of reported domestic violence in the entire state of California. What if we were able in our county to eliminate domestic violence? Interface can't do this by ourselves. We know we need to have partners. That's why we're uh, engaging law enforcement. That's why we're engaging the Ventura County uh, District Attorney's Office, uh, uh, Children and Family Services of the county. 
We know it's going to take a partnership of all of these organizations and then some. Together I think we can really make a difference in our community. I wholeheartedly agree. If I had had that back then, if I had known that the resources were available, I think my life would have been so much different. She ended up uh, finding help with her aunt and uncle. They connected her to a 211. Interface was there to help her and we immediately placed her into our program where she felt safe. There is help out there, there's counseling, and perhaps we never have to come back to that home. That's right. the goal. Domestic violence you know, affects all of us. Think about the stories that you have heard today. We need your help to intervene with kids and families who are experiencing violence. Interface is very passionate in addressing the needs that these families have. This isn't just another program for us. Interface does many wonderful things, but this is one of the few programs where we actually save lives, and you can assist us in that with your support. Thank you for supporting Interface as we confront domestic violence in our own community. Good morning. This morning we have with us today none other than Mary Heidi Harvin, and we are so excited to have you here speaking with us this morning. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Good, good. Um, you know, I recently um, stumbled on your story on Slow Tribune, and I was very intrigued um, because it totally partners with our cause. And I would love to share, have you share about that just for a bit. But first, I would love for people, no, I would assume, I would like in my heart to assume that everybody knows who you are <laughs> as a public uh, figure. And so if you wouldn't mind just sharing just briefly, just a little bit about you and um, married kids, hamster, like whatever that looks like. Sure. I grew up um, in Pasadena and I came to San Luis Obispo when I was, I think, 18 or 19. I came originally to go to Cuesta and then transferred to Cal Poly, graduated from Cal Poly. I have a degree in liberal studies. And along the way, I had two kids. I have a daughter who is 27 and then another kid right behind her who just turned 26. I homeschooled my kids primarily and was um, mostly a single mom and a house cleaner for a lot of their growing up because it was the job that I could still homeschool them, prioritize them. And um still take care of my family. So I did that for a really long time. And then I started to become more concerned about our environment, in particular climate change. And that's the issue that motivated me to get into politics. And so that led me on a long um, activist path, which eventually led me to run for office. And I became mayor of San Luis Obispo in 2016 and have been mayor for the last five years. My name is Ian Parkinson. Um, I uh, have been in law enforcement in this county just over uh, 36 years. This is my uh, third term as sheriff. They're four-year terms. The sheriff is really the last independent uh, law enforcement executive, uh, at least in the state. And what I mean by that is I report to the people. I don't report to the board uh, or a council. I've seen a lot of different sheriffs throughout the state and uh, learned a tremendous amount, but also had the you know great fortune of um, seeing San Luis in a complete San Luis County in a completely different light because we are so different uh, from top to bottom, from you know east to west, and e every community is a little different and has different needs. So having that opportunity to do that and see that and seeing the different needs has been probably one of the highlights of my time as sheriff. So, have you ever heard anybody say man up? Yes. Uh, my dad tells us that a lot, and when he means that, he means like to be tough and strong and don't let people see your weaknesses. I mean, Growing up in the 60s and 70s as a young kid, man up had a total, you know, that was strong, aggressive, uh, you didn't cry, being macho, seas hombre. You always were in charge, uh, you couldn't show emotions. Society, you know, the definition of a man seems to be 
to not show any emotions whatsoever, you know, show no weakness. By society standards, manning up means being tough, rough, never showing your soft side, never letting them see you sweat, never saying you're sorry, and you do what it takes. If you're not the strongest, uh, if you're not the toughest, then we look down on that. First thing you want to do is like, man up. It's normal locker room talk, man up. Don't feel the pain, suck it up. Don't be a wuss. And this is what the true meaning of being a man is. Unfortunately, we put people in boxes. Little boys are often told not to cry, or if they fall down when they're playing sports, they're forced to get up and play through the pain. It's time to change. My athletes will tell you that being a man is far beyond a, a playing field or a court. It's how that they, uh, they treat young ladies. It's how they treat their teachers. It's how they treat our custodians. It's how they treat the lunch ladies. And they're being taught on how to be a man and what's right and what's wrong. That means more to me as a coach than, than any win. Manning up is being a smart man, accepting diversity and respect her opinions and, and ideas. I'm like the leader of my family now, so that's what manning up means to me. Well, when I man up, I treat my wife with the same respect and kindness that I hope my daughters are someday treated. When I man up, I face fear head on. It's okay not to have all the answers. I'm not afraid to say, I don't know. Uh, let's figure this out together. When I man up, I take responsibility for all my actions, not just some, for all my actions. I used to see my mom have bruises, and so I don't want to be like my dad. I want to do better than he did. It's an epidemic, uh, and the only way it's going to be changed for the better is for men to be actively involved. Talking about it is important, but we've got to act, we've got to do, we've got to be the role models. Man up. Man up. Man up. Man up. Man up. Man up. Say it one minute. Man up. Man up. Hey you, man up. Jennifer Adams, all the way from San Luis Obispo, from what's now Lumina Alliance, which, um, of course, if you don't know, Stand Strong and Rise have consolidated to this beautiful new Lumina Alliance. And what I'd really love for you to do is just share a little bit about your story, if you wouldn't mind. Certainly. So I am a survivor of childhood sexual abuse. Um, it was a family friend uh, who he and his wife uh, were trusted friends of my parents and they babysat us. And so um, I, in my baby book, I have a, a flower card uh, that. Uh, he and his wife sent when I was born. So um, he knew me and uh, basically had access to me from the time that I was born. And so as long as I can remember, um, as far back as my earliest memories go, uh, he was abusing me uh, as well as my sister. And so that lasted until I was nine uh, when my parents divorced and we moved out of the area. I had never said anything. You know, he said it was our secret and I was not to tell. And, um, and so it wasn't until we moved away that I, I told my mom. In my own family, there is a history of my mom was abused as a child, as was her mother. And um, so as is oftentimes happens in families, uh, because of that history, there's just an inability to address it and deal with it appropriately. I did not receive any help or counseling or anything um, as, a, as a child. Uh, another common thing that happens is that uh, childhood victims end up uh, experiencing victimization again. Uh, so I was also raped as a teenager. Um, also by a family friend. I sought help in my later 20s and um, went through some very helpful therapy. And as I tell people now that are dealing with these kinds of things, 
Um, it, it is always something that is a part of you. It's a part of my makeup. It, it had an incredible impact on me and who I am as a person, um, but it no longer defines me. Fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up Just the sum of every high and every low Remind me once again just who I am Because I need to know
Kimberly. I am so excited to be joining you again for Fashions for a Purpose. As Mary Kay's great granddaughter, it is my honor to serve on the board of the Mary Kay Foundation and to support our top fundraisers like you. You know, I think as Foundation Ambassadors, we have one of the best jobs in the world. Leading initiatives with your support that continue to carry Mary Kay's legacy forward to help make beautiful changes in the lives of women and girls. If Mary Kay were here today, I am sure she would be just as impressed and grateful as I am for your dedication to continue to raise your voice and support the women who need it most during this difficult time. The two issues that were closest to Mary Kay's heart have taken on even more urgency as this pandemic continues forward. Cancer patients were especially vulnerable to the potential effects of COVID-19, and sadly, we saw the number of domestic violence incidents increase sharply after lockdown orders began. Now, right here in North Texas, where I live, one local shelter saw its referral rate increase 60% last year. Now, unfortunately, this was a devastating theme across the entire United States. But together, we can make a difference. And with your support, we celebrated our 25th anniversary this year, which means a lot of good going into our causes. Since 1996, we have awarded over $25 million to grant funds for cancer research. And in 2000, when we added gender-based violence to our causes, we have awarded over $57 million for domestic violence support and education and prevention. In fact, in 2021, the Mary Kay Ash Foundation announced the opening of COVID-19 grant relief, offering unrestricted funds to 54 domestic violence shelters for a total of $1.1 million. The shelters we have assisted this year alone support over 1.5 million women and children annually. So Kimberly, I want to take the time personally to thank you for your support of the foundation, your strong advocacy within your community to address domestic violence issues. You are the true hero for women today and every day. I also want to thank your team for their dedication to make this event a success as uh, we all continue to adjust to this new-ish normal. And thank you to each person joining us now, your generous contribution and participation in Fashions for a Purpose, which I am excited to announce is always a Mary Kay Ash Foundation Top 50 fundraiser event, makes a very real impact. Together, we can continue to make a difference. Together, we're supporting a world where women are healthy and safe and empowered. Thanks, Kimberly, and I can't wait to see you guys in person again soon.